الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تبارك وتعالى أيضا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا ثم أما بعد Indeed, all praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, all glorification is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely and without doubt, it is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we turn to in all our affairs. Whether it be our need as human beings, our need as individuals who sin for forgiveness, we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it is our need for assistance in our life, whether it is our need for anything, we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek that assistance. When it comes to putting our trust and our hope and our reliance in something or someone, there is none to put your reliance in, there is none to put your trust in, and there is none to put your hope in, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because there is none that can help you, there is none that can aid you and assist you, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills it to occur. Similarly, nothing can harm you, similarly, nothing can take away from you, except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed to occur. As to what follows today, ayyuha al-Muslimoon, know that we are in the best of days. Know that we are in the best of days that have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created months. And He has created days and so on and so forth. And from amongst these days and these months and these times, there has been some that has been preferred over others in terms of benefit and in terms of uh, magnificence. And as such, we are in one of these times. And we are in, as we said, the best of these times. As the Prophet wasallam, he is reported to have said on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas there is where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said that there is no days in which righteous deeds or which good deeds are are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these 10 days or the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah and the people they asked the companions they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam wal al jihad fi sabilillah not even jihad fi sabilillah and the prophet sallallahu he said no not even jihad fi sabilillah except under one condition except that a person goes out that a man goes out with his wealth and with his life and he returns with none, none of the two nothing is better in terms of righteous deeds in these days nothing is better in terms of righteous deeds in these days and as the Prophet ﷺ, he said, except for one thing, except that if you go out in, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you go out in jihad fi sabilillah, and you return with nothing, not your money and not your life. So special and so significant are these days. Amongst the 
benefits and amongst the actions that we should take in these days are some that I will remind myself and remind each and every one of us here today about. Know that in these days, one of the greatest pillars of Al-Islam is completed. And for many people, this is the completion of their Islam. That they perform the Hajj. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Quran, that the Hajj is in specially appoint, in a specially appointed time. As He mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, that the Hajj is only in a specially appointed and select period of time. And in this period of time, people struggle and they strive with their wealth and with their life and with what they have to fulfill this pillar of Islam. And for many of them, as we mentioned, to complete their Islam. Why do we say this? Why do we say that, we com- that they complete their Islam? One of the great scholars of Al-Islam, Ibn Hajar, he mentions that as a part of the significance of these days, as a part of the significance of this time, is that it is a culmination, it is a gathering of all of the major acts of good and all of the major uh, building blocks of Al-Islam, whereby your faith and your Iman is there, the Salah is there, the Zakah is there, the charity is there, the fasting is there, and the Hajj is there. And these these pillars that we have highlighted and these good actions that we have highlighted, these are the things that I urge myself and I urge each and every one of us to take part in, in these days. Because I want us to understand something and at this point we should understand that there is no need, there is no benefit, there is no good that will come out of us putting off our, good, our deeds. When you have an opportunity to do good, when you have an opportunity to give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you have an opportunity to do in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to do actions that will make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with you, when you are given that opportunity, there is no benefit in you leaving that off. There is no benefit in you leaving that off. And we saw, in the past months, what did we see? We saw so many people who vocalized their want and their longing to be in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to pray in the jama'ah, to do in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they didn't have that opportunity then. They weren't able to do that then. Why? Because they were tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we were tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, and this is one of the benefits that we can extrapolate, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said and He tested us in this way. We had blessings, we had benefits, we had bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we did not even realize until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it away from us. Then we realized. Then we cried out, hoping for a chance to do again. When in the past, the masajid were very sparsely filled. When the masajid were very sparsely filled, people wouldn't come, people wouldn't do. But then the minute you take it away from them, everybody says, Wallahi, I wish I could have been in the masjid. Wallahi, I wish I could have done this and I wish I could have done that. But brother, but sister, you had that opportunity. You had it. But you didn't take advantage of it until it was taken away from you. Ayyuhal Muslimoon, know that from the sunnah of of these days, from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to remember Allah frequently in these days as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ كَثِيرًا and remember Allah, turn to Allah frequently وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ كَثِيرًا turn to Him a lot, remember Him a lot make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly 
And this ayah, we find it at the, at the end, or, or rather in the, in the midst of where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically talks about the hajj. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, he reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that there are no greater days in the sight of Allah in which good deeds are done except in, in these 10 days. So, be frequent in making takbir and tahmeed and tahleel. Frequently say Allahu Akbar. Frequently say Alhamdulillah. Frequently say La ilaha illallah and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these days. Glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently in these days. And know, O gathering of Muslims, that the magnificence of these days are unlike any other. Even in the month of Ramadan, the, the days of Ramadan do not match the days of Dhul Hijjah. And some of the scholars, they go on to explain and they say that while the nights of the last 10 days, the, the last 10 days of Ramadan, the nights are better in terms of the days, the days of Dhul Hijjah are better. These 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better in benefit and in barakah and in fadail. As we mentioned, the basis of the Hajj and the basis of this season, not only for the people that are performing the Hajj, whom may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and bless them and grant them success in their Hajj, only a select few people will be performing the Hajj this year. The, but the essence of this entire season, as we mentioned, is a combination of all of the major pillars of Islam. And it is a testament to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَإِذْ بَوَّأْنَا لِإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ أَلَّا تُشْرِكْ بِي شَيْئًا And remember, when we prepared for Ibrahim, when we told him to prepare this house of worship, saying that do not ascribe, do not add anything along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not commit shirk, do not add anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah is one and the only, the only one to be worshipped. This is part of the essence of this time, this is part of the essence of this season. Another point that we want to mention and a reminder for us is something that people, many times you tell the, the, the hujjaj, but it is also something that we need to keep in mind, especially in this time. It is sincerity in our actions. You know, you tell the people that are going for hajj and their leaders, they tell them that make sure that your intentions, make sure that what you are doing is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and no one else and nothing else. You're not doing it for show. You're not doing it for any other reason except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know that this is true for any action. Know that this is true for any action. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, أَلَا لِلَّهِ الدِّينُ الْخَالِسِ Surely this religion, this way of life, the worship and the obedience is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And when these actions are done, no matter how good an action, no matter how righteous an action, if they are done with any shred of insincerity, when they are done with any ounce of want for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the action is deficient and it is void. What we do needs to be solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, and this is the third and final reminder that I want to give regarding this time period, is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says at the end of the verses, or one of the verses talking about hajj, He says in the beginning of the verse, He says, prepare. Prepare for the hajj. Know what you have to do, make your preparations. But then at the end of the ayah, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَىٰ Right? 
Make your preparations, take your provisions, make your provisions. But at the same time, know that the best of provisions, the best of preparations, is the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is taqwallahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. So know, O gathering of Muslims, that the best of, of, the best of things for us is to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all that we do. To have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of our lives. To praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek forgiveness from Him, to proclaim His magnificence as much as possible. And seek forgiveness, seek your, seek your help and assistance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that which is best. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate sickness and illness from amongst us. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shed His mercy upon us, forgive us, grant us the best in this life and the best in the hereafter. And that may He grant us entrance into His paradise. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمة أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأستقهم حيان عثمان وعقضهم علي وفاطمة سيدة النساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدنا الشباب أهل الجنة اللهم اغفر لعباس ولده مغفرة ظاهرة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحب أحبهم ومن أبغدهم فببغض أبغدهم وخير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمنا ورحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله أذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى صلاتكم